Yo, hey, Jeff, I noticed that uh, all the roaches were gone from the second level. How would you manage to pull that off? Actually, pretty easy. Uh, what I did was I hooked up my iPod to the speakers, put on our podcast on volume 10, and they all just immediately left the room. That's good. I mean, they're not really our demographic. We're more looking for brooches. Okay. Hey guys, welcome into the Bro 4 Squad podcast. This is our review of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 8, titled The Last Day. I am your host, Jeff Hornacek. Alongside me, as always, is the mad scientist, Brian Banner, here to grade this episode as we do all of our TV show episodes on our four criteria, the acting, the story, our favorite scene, and any theories going forward. Banner, let's throw it right into the lab first. What did you think of the acting in this episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? If I'm going to be honest with you, there was a lot of high points and a lot of low points. Um, I'm going to go off of one person that I in particularly like that I think is controversial. I like Flint. I like his character. I like what they're doing <laughs> with him. I like where they're going with him. Um, I know that his acting may not be subpar, but let's be honest with ourselves. What better place to grow than in this cast where you, they can kind of hide him a little bit because everybody else is so, so good. Um, so I'm, I'm actually really, really digging that character and, and how he's being played. Yeah. He's a little bit of a whiny bitch, but like, get over it. I think it's weird to me. He's already dressing like Anakin in the prequels. He's wearing like a poncho everywhere he goes. It's kind of confusing to me. Well, maybe have he's to give gonna, my, ab- maybe he's going to kill some sand people. I don't know. We'll see. That would, that would be an interesting plot twist if they it's showed up by on Disney. the surface. For me, I have to give my obligatory tip of the cap to Ian DeCastaker, who just has killed. This has really been like his breakout season. I feel like he's been the prospect who we've we've been looking at for years. Like this guy's gonna blow up on the scene, and he finally did it. And then also a newcomer this episode, Michael McGrady, who played Voss in this episode. He looks like the fifth member of the Blue Collar Comedy Tour, but I actually thought he was really <laughs> he was really good in this episode and. Uh, I'll get into why I loved him so much here in a little bit when we get to best scene, but pivoting that right onto the story, this was, I feel like, the first episode we've gotten in a while this season where they really raised a lot of questions uh, as opposed to answering them. And we need this occasionally, obviously, in a show like this, because to keep the story going, you got to keep tickling us and teasing us, and they did that here. So what did you think of the story in this episode? I, I absolutely loved it. Um, I think this is probably my second favorite episode of the season behind the Fitz and Lance Hunter episode um, because this is, this is getting us to that next step. This is getting us to where we wanted to go. Um, Fitz and Lance Hunter episode did that as well. We got Fitz back and we figured out how he's meeting up with the team. Now the team is, is moving into that next area and they're tell they're basically telling us that, Hey, they can't go back to the present or the past or whatever you want to call it without finding Yo-Yo Mac and Flint. And um, I really enjoyed how they're doing that, that they brought Robin back and how – who knew a season and a half ago how integral of a part her and her dad were going to be in this show? Yeah, no one did. For me, they basically f- fractured the season into two storylines. I thought originally I wouldn't give a shit about what was happening on the lighthouse and would only care about the surface stuff. After what they did in this episode with Mac and Yo-Yo sort of leading that resistance where they're just exterminating roaches, and now, finally, the shotgun axe is God back. God damn it. I was so Let's fucking go. pissed. It's awesome. It's not awesome. Even Flint says it's not awesome. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're if you're going to base your opinion on things off of Flint, then I think I've already won the argument here. It's not here. that awesome. So there's if, – if you're into one of the two storylines, then they got something there for you. And then the other thing that I really liked about this episode is with the whole prophecy shtick, we, we kind of have the unreliable narrator in Robin because she's clearly a little bit crazy, but she's usually right. So we don't know what she's saying. We didn't get to hear what she whispered to May. So I'm curious as hell as to what's going to happen with that. And then when May walks out, she's basically like when you have a substitute teacher who's been told who the troublemaker is in class. She's like, who is Flint? And it's like, well, who's going to rat him out in class of his boys? So we'll see how that picks up in the next uh, episode. 
Third category, best scene in this episode. We got a lot of action in this episode, as has kind of been the theme this season. We got some of the roaches getting the shit beat out of them. And then obviously we had some pretty interesting theories and then a, a nice little uh, Fitzsimmons makeout sesh. Mm. If it's none of those, or if it's one of those, what was your best scene from this episode? Um, my best scene was actually the last scene where you are going bouncing back between, I guess it's past and future or present and, and future with May and Robin, how May is taking care of Robin after her, her mom died and basically doing that exact same thing in the future time frame where, hey, you told me that I didn't see it, but I would see it and now I have and just bouncing back and forth basically where they filmed the same scene twice was so beautifully done. And again, it that was probably the most emotionally packed scene of the entire series, uh, in my opinion. Wow. That was a good one. I think uh, Ming-Na Wen, who plays Agent Melinda May, anytime they've given her like powerful stuff like that, whether it was with her husband or when her and Ward were kind of hooking up for a while, she stepped up to the plate and fucking drilled one into the, the seats in left field. For me, my favorite scene was when hitter, Voss... Man. She is. If she, she cheats on the fastball, but that's fine. My favorite scene was when Deke got knocked out with the socket wrench. You fucking hate that guy. I just hate Deke, and I hate the way that the guy plays him. He's just such a sniffly, whiny little bitch. So I love that scene. But actually sort of segueing off that scene was when Voss decided that he was going to try and recruit the gangs of New York and lead a revolt against the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on the Zephyr. What he didn't realize is even though it's technically their home field, it's actually an away game. Because they built the Zephyr, and also you you can't attack the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They're just going to kick the shit he out of you. He totally so. underestimated them. Like, it's not even funny. Like, he was, he, he was looking to the next game. When he brought in the chick who looked like Storm, who was wielding that knife, who looked like she had never attacked anyone ever, Coulson just was like, what are you doing? This oh, is you kind mean of the Beyonce weird. Storm? But yeah, Beyonce Storm. The Beyonce, Beyonce actually, from Starsky and Hutch? Beyonce's, you mean Austin Powers? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, that, this is falling off the rails quickly, but that was my favorite scene, and I have to give an honorable mention to the uh, Roach extermination scene with Yo-Yo, just because, again, when this show has done CGI, especially the last two seasons, they've made it count. All right, theories going forward. I have no idea. You say you have something cool here. I'm interested to hear it, so why don't you go first? What do you think is going to happen I, next? I don't know if it's cool. I think it's kind of obvious, though. At the end, she she says, who is Flint? Obviously, we know that Flint has a big, integral part in this now. I think they have to bring Flint back to the past or the present. I, I still don't. Do we call it past or do you call it present? It's well, it's the past from where they are, but it's the present from where the show, the framing device has been. So we can say the past, I okay. guess. So they have to bring Flint back to the past because Quake blows up the Earth. What is the Earth, Jeff? A little science question for you. Okay, uh, you want me to say that it's rock? Right? It is rock, and Flint is going to have to hold it together while Quake. <clears throat> blows it up but i think aside from that why would we still don't understand daisy's motivation it looked like she was like breaking up with her boyfriend i think it's an accident footage. i don't think she purposely does it i think that she thinks she's doing the right thing maybe it's something that she heard from robin um like she robin saw a vision of her doing this and so she feels like she has to do this or not do that to fulfill this prophecy or not fulfill this prophecy and killing or not killing somebody and flint is going to save the day because he's such that, a good actor that, that makes a lot of sense to me i still am not totally sold that daisy slash quake did actually destroy earth i feel like there has to be some infinity war tie in this season i don't know if they'll drag on the how did earth get destroyed uh, storyline long enough for that tie-in to happen, but I think it'd be really cool if maybe Thanos had her either under control with the Mind Stone, or there was some correlation to the Infinity War story that we see that ties into the end of Earth, because as far as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. goes, this is the highest stakes in terms of the MCU that we've ever seen in a season, because literally the Earth has been ripped in half. So, yeah. And the cool thing about that is that they're going off of the fact that the Earth got ripped in half from the show, but as viewers... I'm not convinced that it's from the show. I would be almost convinced that it's from the movie side. Yeah. So is it a tie-in? Is it not a tie-in? I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to keep – well, not really. It's kind of the showrunner's choice, but – Win in I Vegas, guess. man. All right. Win in I love Vegas. When, I love when you quote scripture. 
And on that note, we have been the Bro4 Squad. Thank you guys for checking us out. If you could give us a follow on Twitter, at Bro4 Squad, we'd appreciate it. Subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes, Bro4 Squad. Three words. Check out everything we're doing on our website at bro4squad.com. And Brian, do you want to jump in here? For the- yeah, I want to jump in here. We have, look, the shotgun axe is just a ripoff of uh, Abe Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Okay. Why would anyone rip that off? Thank you guys. You, you tell me they did it. But no one would want to copy that. It's horrible. No, that's what they did. He no. has a shotgun. Uh-huh.